If you want to support the channel, go check out my Patreon. There's rewards like end of video shoutouts and even featuring in a video. More rewards will be added and I'd love to hear from you guys to know what I should add. For more information, go to patreon.com slash macwell. Previously, on the Venezia FC career mode, we clinched our first European competition qualification in the club's long history. Could this be the year we qualify for even bigger competition? Marek Rodak Well, here's the thing, guys. Describing keepers you haven't played with is near impossible, so... Let's all welcome Marek to the club again. Defenders. Valerio Romano was grinding, making sure nothing got past him. His stature allows him to make hard, clean tackles, unlike a lot of smaller fullbacks. Alessandro Semprini, on the other hand, we need someone new really badly. Andrea Cistana. The dude from Joji's Sanctuary music video in his first season has had its ups and its downs. But at the end of the day, he is still a solid option. Nicolo Armini. Captain Italia was once again an amazing defender last season. So many passing lanes cut off, so many vital tackles made. There's not much else to say about this guy, he's just consistently good every season. Midfielders. Alessio. Riccardi. Riccardi had his best performances in the second half of the season. Once he got going, there was no stopping him. Six goals, including one last-minute goal versus Milan, and a vital goal against Sassuolo at home. He dished it out 12 times as well, and with the support of Funk Yannick Kessier, the midfield is going to be absolutely nasty. Attackers. Luca. Fiordellino. Luca improved from season 2, slotting home 12 goals, most in the first half of the season. Top on the 16 assists and 5 from the Coppa Italia, and the last remaining OG has continued to prove the doubters wrong. Ricardo Sotillo. Ricardo improved even more and was a constant threat against any and all defenders. If there was a stat like pass leading to an assist in this half-assed game, he'd have about 50. The counterattack buildup practically relied on him, and with his new partner in crime Chiesa, this could possibly double the threat too. Kevin Lasagna. I knew y'all weren't sure about this signing. Even I was during the first quarter of the season. But then something happened. And at the end of the season, Lasagna has 21 goals in the league, tied with Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the type of story anyone loves, and hopefully Kevin can continue his tasty form throughout Season 4. Transfers. So, the board continues to screw me. We had a 3 million increase from last season, after, um, I don't know qualifying for the f***ing Europa League. So, in order to be comfortable in funds once again for January to come around, we sold Alessandro Capello for 8 million, Alessandro Fiodoliso for 1.1 million, and Mario De Marino for 400k. Yeah, so I don't really have anything special before the shortlist bit, so I guess I'll put a slight hint on what my next series is. And there it is. You catch it? Fabio De Paoli. It's about time we got a new right back. The opposition were exposing the left side way too often. And Fabio will fix this as he is just by far the better right back at 75 rated compared to a slow growing 71 rated Alessandro Semprini. Season 4 continues to see the holes be sealed. Could this be the deciding factor for Champions League football? Matteo Pessina. Honestly, this guy is just a backup, but a rating of 75 and a potential of 81 makes him an incredible backup. He reminds me a lot of Sturaro from my Carpi FC career mode back in FIFA 16. More depth in general will be very helpful also as we try to chase more silverware, like the Europa League. The question is, how big of an impact will Matteo have for us? Well, men, welcome to Venezia FC. So with this squad, could the new additions help us go even farther up the table and maybe even qualify for the Champions League this season? Well, let's find out. Alright, so this is for all my Venetians out here. I hope I don't disappoint you, but I know I will. Eh, Venezia che parla di te, un legame che segna una vita, per un popolo coi coco si, di storia, di gloria, di grande memoria di che vive in complicità, io ne per me. Well, 
Well, 5-0 no on aggregate. That was pretty simple. We have qualified for the Europa League. And here's the group we'll be having to deal with. Braga, which they are a very decent uh, Portuguese team. Hent or Ghent. I don't really know too much about them. And Sangalen. I don't know anything about this club. I, I don't even know where they're from. Oh, they're from Switzerland? Cool, the more I know then. Sampdoria. So the thing about season four and then the rest of the seasons, and don't worry, this isn't gonna like change the quality or anything, or at least I hope it doesn't. But I mean, the highlights are gonna be a little shorter because some of these games are gonna be absolute blowouts. But Riccardi here in the 83rd minute makes it 1-0, our first goal in the Serie A season for season four. And hopefully this is a kickoff to a great, great campaign. Now, 88 minutes played, it's Dylan and Bayou who now replaces Chiesa on the bench, but now he's on the pitch, so it doesn't really matter, as Dylan and Bayou gets past one of the defenders and now fools the other one, then crosses in for the sensei. Oh wait, that went in? Okay, turn the edit back on then. Lecce. Our first home match, so hopefully we can impress here, but we're not impressing so far as uh, Lecce have the first chance here. It's Missiroli to Lamantia crossing it in. Armini with the good block, but then rebound goal. 1-0 Lecce. 59 minutes played though, a chance for Venezia now. It's our new signing Kessier to Lasagna, threading it to Fiordolino. Fiordolino then gets it back to Lasagna, and Lasagna is just gonna slot it home into the bottom right corner, and it's one all just like that. 67 minutes played now, it's Fiorlino to Kessier. Kessier then threading it to Lasagna, and Lasagna just fools around the defender just because he doesn't have enough speed, brings it to Kessier, back to Lasagna. Lasagna then cuts, stops, and then takes the shot, and he ain't missing from there. A brace at our first home match for Kevin Lasagna. You just love to see it, don't you? 77 minutes played now, it's Gistan on the ball, passing it to Male. Male then bringing it to Kessier. Kessier, no one in the middle to pass to, so he passes it back to Fiorlino, back to Mali. Mali threads it to the man, Kessier, and the tank. Scores for the first time in his Venezia career. Napoli away. It just never goes well. But hey, maybe things will change. Probably not, because an attack already for Napoli here. It's Milik just misses the net. But it's like deja vu once again for like the fourth time in a row. It's Ricardo Sotil on the wing. This left wing, that same left wing, crossing in for Riccardi to Fiordolino. And Fiordolino gets it saved by the keeper. And now a corner whipped in for a Napoli attacker. It's headed towards Milik, who just misses the net. 56 minutes played. It's Gundogan. He passes it to Tovan on the wing, passing it back to Demirbai, back to Tovan, and then Tovan crossing in for Demirbai, who just misses it by just an inch, probably. Oh, but Napoli, Na Napoli just didn't want to give us a single break whatsoever. We actually only had one shot in this match, by the way, but it's Milik now, threading it to Demirbai, and Demirbai with a great finish into the bottom left, 1-0 to Napoli, and that's how we lose that match. Next match, please. Europa League. Time to get a good start in this competition. This is not a good start. It's okay though, because Venezia would get one back here as Kessier brings it to Lasagna. A great finish into the top left corner. And Kevin Lasagna continues to save us every single match, it seems like. Yo! What the fast forward to the 83rd minute, it's Kessier to Luca Fiorellino, and Fiorellino is going to go on a little solo run himself, as he cuts inside, decides to not pass anyone, just take it himself, and take the shot himself, finding the back of the net, giving us the two-all draw, and once again, Luca Fiorellino just showing that he does not need to be replaced just yet. Brescia. Oh, that, was, that was a nice little R roll. <laughs> Six minutes into the match, chance for Brescia here as Sastri crosses it in for an open Garcia. Armini completely botching that defense, and it is 1 0 to Brescia, just like that. Brescia continue their dominance against this very weak Venezia side. I don't even want to say they're weak, but we just haven't been that great. But it's Balotelli here. <laughs> 41 minutes played now, Venezia with their first attack. Finally, it's Kessier threading it to Lasagna, and Lasagna with just the keeper to beat. Uh, 63 minutes played though, a counter-attack for Venezia, this is exactly what we wanted, and we've kind of lacked throughout this season so far, but it's Chiesa here, he just fools the defender, getting right past him, has all the room in the world, and just finishes it into that bottom left corner, one all, 
the comeback is on free kick in the 86th minute we're not taking it from there because no one can actually score a free kick from there but it's valerio romano now he passes it to luca fiorellino fiorellino to kessier kessier sees sotil making that run and sotil with the beautiful finish and there is the game winner by ricardo sotil the man who has been with us for four seasons and he just never disappoints okay that's a lie but for now he hasn't ac Milan. Early chance for Milan already here at the San Siro as it's Paqueta here. Paqueta now trying to find someone in the middle, passes it to Benacer instead. Benacer to Castillejo, and Castillejo makes it 1-0 after just 10 minutes for AC Milan. But if you remember one thing, we actually bought one of Milan's best players, Fankianic Kessier. And here it's a counter-attack for Venezia thanks to the man as Sotil brings it to Fiorellino. Fiorellino threads it to the man, a Kessier. Fankianic Kessier with a beautiful finish into the back of that. A beautiful blast into the back of the net and look at that he comes back to the San Siro and scores against his former club the absolute scenes but it wouldn't take long for AC Milan to find another response here as it's Blas here passing it to Paqueta and it's just way too simple for AC Milan I have no idea what's going wrong with the defense but it seems like uh, they're a little overdue now 55 minutes played another chance for AC Milan it's Castillejo to Hernandez Hernandez to Benacer Benacer great ball to Castillejo as he crosses Parma, can we please stop conceding against the f***ing mid-tier sides? <clears throat> Anyways, the tank himself, Fankiani Kessier, passing it to Fiorellino. Fiorellino spots Dylan Mbaio on the edge of the box, skips past his marker, then crosses it in for Riccardi, saved by the key. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Now into the second half, it's Fankiani Kessier once again, and I'm telling you, man, he is like a Tomas Party. Someone said that in the comments, and I very much agree with that. But it's Kevin Lasagna here. He leaves it off for Kessier, who's just gonna blast it in the top right corner this time, and it's 2-1 to Venezia. This man is a game changer, I'm telling you now. 49 minutes played now, a defender dispossessed in the worst position ever possible. Now it's Lasagna on the ball. He tries to defeat that one defender, can't really do it so he just back heals it to Riccardi and Riccardi ain't missing from there finesse into the back of the net 3-1 to Venezia and for some reason it has to be a mid-tier table side to score one goal against us to actually get a sparking an attack for once but it's in bio as he has no one around him takes the shot himself it's 4-1 to Venezia hosting our very first ever match in a European competition hosting our very first embarrassing results in a European competition. It is now the end of September, so it is another table review, and I would say a good start. I mean, to be fair, I want to aim more for top four because that's what we're really going for. I want the Champions League. Whether that is actually possible or not this season, we'll see because, I mean, we made improvements, but is it going to be enough for the Champions League? I'm not honestly too sure. And our glorious youth academy here, Francesco Rizzo looking good. Davide Mancini looks like an average player that we might use, who knows. Daniele Esposito, I don't know why I'm not convinced about this guy. Maybe it's because he's bald, I genuinely do not know. Marco Lombardi on the other hand, Mwah. chef's kiss. I am so excited to use this man soon. And Valerio Costa, you're on thin ice buddy. It's that time again. Cagliari time! 19 minutes into the match, first chance for Cagliari here, it's Pereiro crossing it in for an open Q3, so just blast it over the bar. 27 minutes played, chance for Cagliari once again, it's Perry Pons now as he gets past Riccardi somehow, this game just makes absolutely no sense to me, but nonetheless he takes the shot, it's saved by the keeper. Yes, actually Rodak made a save. It's a miracle because it's been like five games. 36 minutes played. First chance for Venezia here. It's Sotil. He brings it to Kevin Lasagna. And Kevin Lasagna can't really get anywhere, so he leaves it off for Sotil. Sotil takes this shot, and it's over the bar. 41 minutes played. Another chance for Venezia. It's Riccardi to Lasagna. Chiesa getting past his marker. And it's saved by the keeper. 51 minutes played. Now Kessier with a bunch of room. But because this man isn't really that fast, he passes it back to Fiorellino. Fiorellino then leaves it off for Riccardi. Skips past his marker and misses the net. Ah, oh, wonderful. And it's another chance for Venezia. Will we actually score? Who the hell knows? But it's Fiorellino this time. He leaves it off for Lasagna. Takes the shot. It's saved by the f***. 
fucking keeper. 66 minutes played, first chance for Cagliari in the second half here, but they did make it count as it's Barry Bonds here. He tries to pass it somewhere. It's blocked by Armini, but now Lalana on it, passing it to Gonate, leaving it off for Cherry, who somehow isn't offside, makes it 1 0 to Cagliari. You know, I just love this game because we had about 15 different opportunities and none of them went in. I mean, I, I don't want to blame it on the scripting or anything, but at this point, it kind of looks very suspicious. Enough ranting about the game, though. This is the Venezia career mode, not FIFA 20 rants. As now it's Fiorellino. He leaves it off for Kessier, who is unfortunately offside. It's 80 minutes played now, just 10 minutes remaining for Venezia to somehow find the net. I don't even know if it's possible at this point, but it's Riccardi now. Riccardi passing it to Sotil, a good ball to him, and a good ball to Lasagna also as he just chips it past the keeper. And yes, we actually score against Cagliari after being bullshitted about 15 different times. Bologna, first chance for Venezia here in the 24th minute, Kessier passing it to Chiesa. Chiesa now seeing the run by Depali, leaving it off for Depali. Depali could cross it in but he decides to cut inside passing it back to Chiesa and Chiesa with that really really great composure just like Beethoven passing it to Fiorellino great little pass and great little finish as it's 1-0 to Venezia and yes we finally scored the first goal in a match for once but now off an indirect free kick a chance to make it two here as it's Fiorellino he passes it to Chiesa on the wing now Chiesa decides to pass it back to Fiorellino Fiorellino leaves it off for Valerio Romano all the way up in the box in the middle and he finds the back of the net to get his first Venezia goal in his career. Now 45 minutes played looks like we just can't seem to maintain a clean sheet because just look at how bad this is. As Now 83 minutes played, it's Pessina as he passes it to Sotil, getting past his marker. And Sotil, what he's gonna do here is just play around with the Bologna defense as he goes deeper into the box and then just curls it smoothly, like a little smooth criminal, into the back of the net. It's 3-0 to Venezia, and finally, finally we get a clean sheet. Alright, third match in the Europa League, we really need this to go our way, because right now... <laughs> It ain't looking great. Chance for Venezia here early into the match. It is Giuseppe Colombo, our very huge prospect. As he cuts inside, takes a shot once, takes it again after it's blocked, and finds his first goal after just two played matches. Arise from the lagoons, my boy. You are to be a star. 42 minutes play now. It's Fiorellino to Riccardi. Riccardi then passing it to Chiesa, and it's just some casual Venezia attack. It's something you love to see, and I do all the time, and it's 2-0 to Venezia, and finally we get 3 points in the Europa League. Roma. Venezia on the counter here, as it's Riccardi here, dispossessed by one of his former teammates, and now Sigurdsson, leaving it off for Dennis this time, and Dennis makes it 1-0 to Roma. Not a great start whatsoever. But it's okay, maybe we can make a comeback, who knows here, but it's now Dennis, he leaves it off for Under, and Under makes it 2-0. But I've, I've come back from 2 goals down, I mean... There's no problem there, but now it's Jesus here. Jesus bringing it to Diorara, back to Jesus. Now Clivert on the wing, crossing in for an open Barak. No one even guarding him. And it's 3-0. I remember at this point in time, I had absolutely no hope in myself, my future, really anything that was going on in my life. Because Roma were completely killing me. And now another one from Barak, as it's 4-0. <sighs> well... That's all, folks.